when you're ready. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. So we're, we're having a cup of tea now. Yeah. Now we're no, really, really hot getting... Oh, you're water. Well, I'm having hot water. Now yeah. we're really... Let's get it right, Laura. Yeah. Now we're really getting into the nitty gritty. Okay. So um, I know that you used to be a vegetarian. Correct. Yeah. And now you're not anymore. Correct. So what, what happened there? What shifted in your thoughts there? Okay. Well, I told you a little bit earlier that I went past the mind as such. Mm -hmm. So therefore everything is one. Everything is consciousness. So therefore... Let's, let's backtrack a little bit. Um, I, I became a vegetarian because of cruelty to animals. Mm -hmm. I didn't like cruelty and that's why I stopped eating meat mm -hmm. and I stopped um, eating fish eventually. Yeah. So that was the reason I did it. Now I know everything is consciousness and there's not really a me. There's just consciousness. Mm -hmm. There doesn't seem to be the same problem with eating animals. Uh, but the trouble is I'm still not 100% happy with it mm. because I don't like cruelty to animals. Yeah. So I would, if you listen to all this stuff, everything's paradox. Mm. Me, one, you know, what's correct, what's not correct. So I'm not 100% happy. But then once I stopped eating meat, I suddenly realised that one of the things about not eating meat was the fact I could say I'm a vegetarian, mm -hmm. which is a pride thing, isn't it? So, you know, what's right, what's wrong? So I'm not totally happy with not being a vegetarian now, but I'm also not unhappy. The main thing is I don't like cruelty to animals. Mm -hmm. So, you know, any cruelty I think is wrong. So do I, am I condoning it by eating meat? I'm not sure. So that's a difficult answer for me, difficult question. So are you still seeking the answer to that? Do you think that answer will come to you? Or do you think that's one of those questions in life there might not ever really be an answer to? Well, when I was into the mind, vegetarian is definitely the way to go. Because, um, you know, it was definitely better. And also if you listen to um, all this Buddhist stuff, it's karma. Mm -hmm. But once you've gone past the mind, there's no more karma to get. So I'm not giving myself any more problems. So I'm quite happy, you know, what I'm doing now. So, but what does that mean? Does this mean you have a, a guilt-free, conscience-free kind of life that you can go and do terrible things because you're? Yeah, but you wouldn't do because you're working from inner, inner knowing, inner, in, so you wouldn't do the wrong thing. Okay. So I think if it was wrong to eat meat, I wouldn't be doing it. Okay. And I, you know, so I'm allowing it to happen. Okay. No limits, really. I'm not limiting myself being a vegetarian. Mm -hmm. I think I still really prefer to be vegetarian. But I do actually enjoy eating meat now. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's an issue. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a, well, they always say just a get out clause is a paradox. Yeah. <laughs> was it was it bacon that drove you back? Isn't that what everyone says? It's always bacon that no, converts the vegetables. No, the reason I did it was because of um, consciousness. Because I realised that it wasn't such a big deal. Mm -hmm. Because nothing, everything's a dream. You imagine you're in, you're you're in bed asleep. You have a dream. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if in the dream you eat meat or not eat meat. Mm -hmm. It isn't that big a deal, is it? No, no, it's not. No. Because it's not real. No, and this life's not real. Mm -hmm. So that's the problem. So this, this life isn't real. Tell no. me what you mean by that. Okay. Okay, there's just oneness. So therefore, there's no separation. If there's no separation, how can it be real? It can't be, can it? I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So there's no separation between people, between things, between yeah. anything? Yeah. It's all consciousness. It's all one thing. But, it, but, I, but I know that you're real because I can touch you and you're there and you're real. Yeah, but then when you go to science, you find out it's not true. Science tells you that there's nothing here. Atoms, molecules. But that is something. That's atoms and molecules. It's energy, moving energy. 
It's not an actual physical object. So it's nothing physical, so your eyes are deceiving you. It's all lies. But isn't an atom something physical? It's something physical you can see under a microscope. Okay, can we go back to basics then? Mm -hmm. Remember when I told you that I, I found this state of nothingness? Yeah. Okay. It can't just be nothing, or else we would not be here, would we? No. There'd be nothing here. Mm -hmm. And there is. There's something, obviously, we can touch and see. Mm -hmm. So there is something and nothing. All right? And what they talk about is all there is, which is this. Mm -hmm. Okay? But what is this? Is it real? By real, you mean solid. It's not true, is it? It's not real. Because you hear about quantum theory and stuff. This is not real. It's a, an imagined dream. Mm. Have you seen The Matrix? I have seen The Matrix, yeah. Yeah, that's basically true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so would you say, when you look at The Matrix, what does it show you? All data and stuff, doesn't it? But the people themselves aren't real, are they? It's all like imagined. Mm. Is that, is that what you think what we are experiencing now is? Yes. Yeah, it's basically a hologram. Mm -hmm. It's um, a, a data field and light producing this hologram. So the hologram of you, a hologram of me okay. talking, which is not together, that's that thing real. <laughs> but it, there is something happening. Mm -hmm. the, the biggest um, unreality is time. There's no time and there's no space. And once you lose time and space, it can't be real, can it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a lot to think about. Yeah. <laughs>